Nope. No, there we are. There we are. I absolutely hate. Why is that so loud? Go turn down. Does my audio sound okay? Because it's acting weird. That's all the way. Which one's all the way down? Why isn't it? I know what the issue is. It's this. Fucking piece of shit. Every time there's a Windows update, it fucks with every one of my settings, and there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing at all. Speaking of Windows update, the whole reason that I didn't stream yesterday is because Windows decided it needed an update. And I ended up having to reinstall Windows because it wouldn't update. It kept the sending error codes and nothing I did worked. A sign says one bottle equals ten cents. Do I not have any bottles? The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says one bottle equals ten cents. No. You need tear to use the tear machine. Well. I mean, at least she was straightforward with it. Anyway, I'm going to go sell some stuff so I can actually spend the night without dying. And then tomorrow I'll go uh, open the water lock and then I'll be able to actually do things. Because I'm pretty sure the only thing I really have, have to do right now involves going across the water lock. Hello, sir. Have you if been you doing any mind, illicit drugs? Please put the flashlight away. Some of us have photonic sensitivities. All right, I do sir. appreciate it. Yeah. My bad, dog. There you go. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Oh, something else to sure. See. Let me have a look. I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Would you like to see? Anything else you're thinking of selling? Postcard. Postcard. Sorry, Mr. Kitsuagi, but I'm still short. Fuck. Okay. Hey. Another time, perhaps. Do you know anything about traffic, Minnesota? I'm sorry, officer, but I don't drive. Didn't you hear it when the dude drove over your roof? Now that I think about it, I do remember hearing a thunderous noise the other night. Some kind of powerful electric vortex hitting the shop and then moving on. That sure narrows down our list of suspects. What the heck? Sounds fascinating. Does that mean you don't have any idea who the driver was? Or yeah, it's fascinating. It was pretty wild. I didn't really know what to make of it, but I know it meant something. Man, you sure do are on drugs for real. Anyway, <laughs> what the fuck was that sentence? Welcome to the pawn shop. Welcome to the pawn shop. We have. I am like. 15 cents short. If I had a single rail, I would be fine. Can I sell? Wait, would he buy clothes? Because I would happily sell some clothes that I'll never wear. Hey, I'm back again. Listen, uh. Hello, hello. 
Let me know if I can help. Sure. Let me help. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. And especially that tie. It swallows photons around it. I have no need for necrotic objects. Your mother is a necrotic object! I'm fun! Look at me sparkling in the light of the projector! Thank you, horrific necktie. You're always a pleasure. Another time, perhaps. Where can I? I'm gonna look that up real quick. I'm gonna look up where I can sell my goddamn clothes in this game. Your Steam community. I know there's no storage limit, but selling these clothes would make my life so much easier. Hey, do they even have prices on them? No. My I'm just stuck with these clothes. Oh. I was really hoping selling all that would, uh, I haven't talked to you today. Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? Me more about the story. I care to spare some change for huh? a working stiff. Oh, no, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. The bosses, hey, man. I think they are. <laughs> it sounds like a good, good arrangement for them. They're broke. Got it. What else do I have to? Did I have to ask here? That's rude. <laughs> yeah, it sure ain't good for me, or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down in his luck. If I had say four myself. That's a fair point. I just, like, I just need some, I don't even need like a dollar or nothing. I just need like <laughs> 15 cents and I'm, I'm solid. <laughs> wait. Hey, There's wait a minute. Here, stored away in some dusty corner. It starts like Mira's temperature is always zero. It is ice in the veins. Its Whoa. camera is an X-ray. Ooh, what that's else? actually pretty nice. I am really surprised. Ah, oh, it, it gave me a thirteen. My total was fourteen. Yeah. All right, cool. It is a chalice held out to you in a silent communion. Silent communion? That's good. We're grasping that you partake of a shifting identity, never your Dang. own. Wow, that's Great actually shit. really good. <laughs> yeah. You came up with that yourself. No, it was auto prompted. Did you? Don't really know. I think that may be an actual poet, and I've learned it by heart. Just a vessel for the muse. I think the words are mine, yes. I don't no really know. Great verses like that sometimes. Ephemeral. You might not look it, 
Seems you have some literary chops. Maybe there's hope for me yet. That's a strange guy, man. It's cool. You're an okay guy. For a cop. For a They're cop? more often in the fists than rhymes, see. Let alone honesty and verse. In a small office behind the old military hospital, hunched under the green glow of his desk light, Officer Hans Blau browses through a test print of his Futurist magazine. It's called The Futurist. The typeface on the original is too small. An organization gets all kinds of folks. I'm sure we try our best. I'm doing what little I can to do right by people. No joke, man. Fuck the police. <laughs> As a cop, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing what little I can to do well, right by people. you've given me some hope, I guess. Nice. You found some common ground with this man. Even impressed him. The next time you look in the mirror, though, remember those words. All right. Let's see what you did there. My rhetoric is max. Uh, did I have anything I wanted to memorize? Not really. Uh. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to upgrade my logic. But we'll go ahead and do that. White envelope. Yeah, I need. I already knew that. Well, in that case. Said something about a mirror, so let's go look at mirrors. Since I have fuck all left to do. Hey, the party is popping tonight, yo. If you want to hang out out here, that would be amazing. Or, you know, just welcome yourself into my house. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. I tend to stop the expression. Fix the faucet. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. It's like something hey! snaps a nerve ending, a thought, a sadness. Your face in the mirror. Wow, I is barely made that. <laughs> the that distorted it for God knows how long. Just like that, it's over. The running gag that your life had become. A sad old man looks back at you. Ew, I kind of like the expression better now. I just look depressed. <laughs> A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face, now without the expression. It's just hairy. Hey. I did it. I think. I did something.
Come on, man. I need like two bottles, maybe. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. Yeah, why? It's a war. An ordinary war. Why mm. must we stop to look at this wall every time we pass by? We have business to attend to. Reasons. Do you want to go back in here though? Mailbox is overflowing. I'm just looking for money at this point. That's it. Is there anything in here that I missed? Nope. Try the other side of the balcony. Thought I had missed one in here at some point. I don't know if I ever came back and got it. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the. Yeah, I remember nothing came of that. Also, these de apartments are depressingly small. Like, this is depressing as hell. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads, Kras Marzov. There's nothing cool about keeping his bust on a nice sim. Why does this tenant have a bust in his bedroom? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. How oh, fitting. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not going to, uh, throw my opinion on that in either way. World's most laughable, laughable centrist, remember? <laughs> I look so angry. I miss when I looked happy. Maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. You hear distant traffic. I just falling in the city. Fuck me, okay? I do like how you can kind of see into here. Also, there's something here that I can click on, but makes a handy shortcut, though. Ah, go away. Accidentally shift tabbed.
I have no money. I spent it all on Gamble. Uh, I've already seen that. Tapping, telescopic batons, futuristic circuit bending to infiltrate harbor machinery. Maybe you could even knock that Kvaltsen crane over using some remote controls. Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Ebrard's law. But really, they're just like you. Is he actually comparing you, an officer of the law, to some neighborhood vigilantes? Well, the man go. whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. The game does put into perspective a lot of uh a lot of political ideologies. I will say the that. Oil cabinet stands steady as ever. The draw. It's very good at. What is it? that I have halogen lights watches you emitting a low buzz you're back before the cargo container its draw has not lessened since Wetter you were last here if anything it seems to have grown slightly I cannot put any more into rhetoric unless I have something I think I can check it later in the day I'm back here. Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. Yeah, you certainly no said things. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Oh, really? Do you have like 15 cents? <laughs> Like a dime and a nickel, that's oh, all I yes, need, yes. friends. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was oh, that about yes. the borscht? I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Power borscht, huh? Never heard of a borscht that turns little guys into dog fighters. Alcohol, however. What do you mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. 
Oh, it looks like the bush just spikes. Oh, look sure, into Mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. Boy, that's creepy. <laughs> A special borscht. I can go do that here in just a second. Man, I really hate not having money. The fuck am I low? 15 fucking cents. I s his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod acknowledging your presence what's the, what is in the borscht you're making the there? man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak sorry I just don't one you. word sounds quizzical then he awaits your answer with his brow arched yes borscht need more Vodka? Ah. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Vodka bust! I love it, Platan! Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself! Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, this place is a powder keg. No, no vodka. Turn your, turn your fingers counter. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. Leo says you're friends with Manana. The mention true? of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then. He falls silent again. They're friends. I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. Let's cause our life a little. Fantastic. Let's. Uh, things about right. I got anything that on me that can increase rhetoric. Just generally? No. No. Uh, no. 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 Takes away rhetoric. Rhetoric. No. 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 And no. Fantastic. <laughs>
can't touch Kuno's drugs. Yes. What do you want to know? You mean like a brief? Do you want me to brief you again? There's no, no reason to wing anything. If you didn't get the brief, that's okay. I did. Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling in rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. Okay, then. Was there anything else you wanted to know? Good. I have all I need. This medicine cabinet is stocked with drugs, plus an old toothbrush, and it's been used quite a lot. There's something else with this window. A man and a woman having sex. A ray of backward motion. Never mind. I think I can do her check again, Officer, can't I? What brings you up here in the rain? <laughs> Ooh, that would be a tough one. I don't have any drama, do I? Fuck all. All right, yeah, we're not. We're not gonna. Most rumors. No, I'm not. Your personal question either. I do like how it sections off each part of the. You see a heavy steel door. I've spent 30 minutes running around doing fuck all. Well, no, that's not true. I figured out why the borscht is being, uh, figured out that the, the, the soup that they're getting fed is always, uh, Is being spiked. Why can't you go down? Come on, dog. Please don't trap me up here. This is like that would be like the absolute worst place to get trapped.
Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. The men are talking, but you swear you hear those black limbs tap on the window as the wind blows outside. Look out the window. Yeah, it's There's a yellow easy. ribbon tied to one of the branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny splash of colour in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Huh? Someone had a key over there. Can you let me slide by so I can grab that thing? I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. Don't think any sliding would really help right now. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the table to you. The key is brass. Workshop spare is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. I wonder what the door... I already know what the door opens. Don't thank, thank you. me. I don't give two shits about your key. There is a silence around this man's words. Unlike Titus, they're afraid of him. That's the type of respect he commands. Yeah, he seems about half crazy. I'm gonna leave him be. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> Sounds like a terrible idea. Anyway, let's open this fucking door. You see a heavy steel door. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then the lock clicks. Voila. For you. Pinball. Horses and swords. Yep. Master Investigator, you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? It is my dusty as... It is my duty as a cop to the world. What do you mean? Nothing, nothing. You're right. Get in there. Deep. Invade every personal space. Break every lock. Yes, browsing that's what it is a quick peek here a short glance there it's all quite delectable that's gross but it has been pretty much what i've been doing i see a door i can open it why shouldn't i fucking open it the jam rock shuffle by now it's clear you like to look inside containers you like to open doors and see what's behind them maybe secrets maybe more juicy containers Let's be honest, you like all containers, trash cans, utensils, utensil trays, manholes, coat pockets, secret containers left behind by the flippy, by the Philippine king that holds forbidden relics. Okay, you haven't come across one of those yet, but one day, wait, is that why you're so hellbent on opening containers? You think you'll find the holy scepter? That's, that's, that's actually amazing. <laughs> Confusing behavior, research time. Okay. I wouldn't hate that. Actually. I have no money. God damn it. And I got nothing I can sell. Nowhere else I can dig through. I've scoured, I'm pretty sure I've scoured every square inch of the map that I have access to right now. Who are those cigarettes I found on the ground? I could see if I could sell them. Maybe.
Okay, where does that go? That goes into... I am not... Damn it. Okay, well... That's fine. That's a big man that I don't want to deal with. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. The box seems happy. We could invade this woman's privacy while I've got an hour to spare. Sure, why not? A heavy door Can with I? a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Well... Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Need some conceptualization. Not sure if I ever did anything with you guys. Officer, the mere sight of police in Martinez makes me feel safer already. How can I help you? Oh, the, rules of the, game. the goal is to throw you bull as close to the cochonnet as you can. That's the cochonnet. He points to the small wooden ball. I'm assuming that one. Well, first, you draw a circle about a half a meter in diameter. We made ours out of rope. Then, the order of play is determined by a coin toss. You win it. You get to throw the cochonnet. Then, the players aim to throw their boards as close to the cochonnet as possible. They must stay in the circle and keep both feet planted. 
Oh, okay. Hi, cool, but I'd rather not. I don't want to take up your time with trivial details of I have fuck all to do. Fuck all that I can do. Is he denying you information when you clearly requested it? That's it. We're blowing the lid off this man, Jar. That's really you rude. Need to know things. Do yes, I really and why? Yes, you do. Knowledge is power. Bathe in it. Empower yourself. Trust me. I don't know All if that I do. Data must have triggered an information hoarding reflex of sorts. Think of it like a small seizure. It will pass. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, officer. Visibly shaking. Good. Gaston finally understands the rules now. Let's see if it makes him a better petonquista. I don't like where this is going, officer. Don't you think we should do something else now? Well, okay, fine, Kitsuyagi. Mr. Or Kim. Is that how you say your last name? I'm pretty sure it is. I'm tired. Uh I could go up there and do that, but I really don't want to. I could investigate here more, but I, there's nothing here to investigate. I think I ran all my leads dry. At least for Martine. I don't think I've talked to you in a while. I've talked to you like once. It's all about money, you know. I wish I had some. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. Oh, dear. I'm not sure where to begin. Hmm. Well? His expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame, and mm. he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed, you might say wild even. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. One other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not Aww. the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. How did you By do it a me? dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident. And he'd just divorced. We hit it off and, well, here we are. Aww. She's skipping over some important parts. Perhaps you'll find out more later. I think I have all the information. I hope I've been useful. So your husband is a oh, yes. A zoologist. A crypto zoologist, to be more precise. Oh, he's looking for cryptids, I think. It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. 
and frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. She's I'm completely not... internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Ah. She's really sweet. I don't want to. There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Oh, I'd be delighted. Yeah. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. <laughs> Boy, I can't really wait. I can't wait to upload this video and say I do absolutely nothing for half of it. <laughs> One cryptid, not a couple. One. This won't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Just one little cryptid, I promise. And assumes a waiting posture. Cryptids, cryptids. Let's hear about all the interesting cryptids. Cryobacter catlensis. Cryobacter catlensis? Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Kotla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Caitlin Mijanu some 70 years ago. What's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijanu found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate. I Certainly from think... before recorded history. Well, I don't know about all that, but I think that that is technically based on something that actually happened. We did, humans did find, like, some older bacteria that was frozen in ice that I think came back to life. I think they called it the zombie bacteria or something. I don't know if what it does, if it does anything to people, but... They did find something. And they, I also saw a more recent so a recent report of worms being thawed out and coming back to life. I don't I don't think it's like earthworms. I think it's a different kind, but still. Pretty neat nonetheless. And scary to think about. Mishinu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. Well that's insane. Why would you do that? And tend to live forever too, as a symbol. He was preparing for the end of times. He wanted to witness the record of the, record the twilight proceedings. Wait, she injected yes, herself with it? The bacteria had survived in the ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. Well, just because something survives in permafrost for a good number of years does not necessarily mean it's going to make you immortal. He probably died of some weird infection. <laughs> as sad as that sounds. It's actually a little hard to see, but do go on. You mean there is an immortal geologist wandering the words? I don't understand. Why would you prolong your life? He was preparing for the end times. Mm-hmm. Miss Janu did talk about the end of the world a great deal before her abrupt departure. Everyone thought the bacteria had driven her mad, but she really was a brilliant woman. Maybe the cryobacter catlensis allowed her to see something no one else could. An educational Sally, we need to discuss. Of course, else. dear. We'll talk about more cryptids later. Uh. I'll be right back. In YouTube, I have returned. <laughs> no money. Who would have thought like three hours in this game would be three hours in real life? I don't have that much time left. I might go ahead and just... Call it. <laughs> Do 
because I mean I do kind of want to let this run until nine this time in the in game time but like there's no point there's nothing to do there is nothing I'm probably missing Is there anything? I don't think there's anything for me to do. I could go ahead and end it and just let it run offline. I'm not sure if I really want to do that. This coin operated viewer is faced. I'm going to look something up. Okay, so apparently there's a free place in the fishing village, but I can't get there yet. So it's not, it doesn't open until tomorrow. Everything I have to do. I'm not I could smoke cigarettes maybe but I've been I'm trying to go for like a quote-unquote clean run I guess I auto saved. I don't know why I auto saved, but I did. Did I trigger something? Maybe it just does that every so often and I just haven't noticed. What is this? Oh. I mean, I can read books to pass time quicker? Why didn't you say so? A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral-related merchandise. 
Good for them. Uh, let's read. Read books. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hiemdal somewhere. Mm -hmm. Rows and mm -hmm. rows of Hiemdala men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hiemdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hiemdal. Return to Hiemdal. And the Solipsistic. Man from Hiemdal and the Hiemdal Man. <laughs> God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hiemdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hiemdal and the False God. Man yeah. from Hiemdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hiemdal, the Hiemdal Colonies. Man from Hiemdal and the Swamp Beast. Man from Hiemdal and the Snow Crabs. Those snow crabs are worse than they sound. Not no. even close. Man from Hyomdal in hell. Man from Hyomdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyomdal under the lake. Man from Hyomdal, Hyomdal burning. There's even the trial of death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Hyomdala man, and so much more. Trying to move my PC over because it's too far. Guys, it's too far. Where's my charging cable at? I got one here somewhere. Something I'm tugging on keeps keeps making Noah keeps fucking with the sound. You? 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 Nope, none of those. There it is. Thirty minutes to charge the ship. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Ow. Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hiamdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyamdala and the Devil Woman. Interesting. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyamdala novels. I'm not buying a book to read it. God, I just wanted to read. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels feature crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine well. misrepresentation <laughs> of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of white women out there that would disagree. Up, down. Just a little bit. There we go. That should be plenty. These Continue. books greatly overstate the excitement of police work. Glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Oh yeah, it can be quite terrible. Not a I'm single sure. mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now. Would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Wow. This is, uh, really starting to hit home for Harry, isn't it? You see, 
Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The yep. stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen oh, no. dies? Turns out he faked it to solve a case. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Is there any more? There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. Come on. This is not the way real police solve crimes. The real police are some 20 kilometers away, sitting in an armored motor carriage. Are we? Come on, Chester. Tell the story again. Bald man turns toward a lean man. That's a month back. Again? Man, I tell that one at least once a month. It's not that interesting. Mr. Flash? fuck it is. And these guys haven't heard it. You see, Chester here. He pokes his finger at the lean man. Chester faked his own death once. Gosh, why? When civilian looks amazed, the bald it's man... A very fucking dangerous case. Ain't that right, Chester? They almost got you that time. Yeah, sure came close. All right, so I was tailing this guy called Francis the Shoe. The inside of the carriage is thick with cigarette smoke. Outside, it starts to After rain. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads... Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic Hard Boiled Phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Mm, why does this speak be to me? The motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals. That's probably right. I'm a complicated guy full of contradictions. Then this is the book for you. I'll leave. I'm just more curious than anything else at this point. Shelves full of biographies of famous people, whoever they are. Sure, Browsing through all books. the books with all their names makes I your just, head spin. I have nothing None to do. None of these seem important. I'm not buying any relevant. of these books. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Ah, so he's fucking insane. Also, why the eyes? And also, why morphine and cocaine? I feel like there are... Never mind. I'm not going to continue that. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like there are better drugs to mix. Also, wouldn't that, like, cause major problems, considering that they're literally opposing... God, my internet search history is going to be so weird. But what happened? You did... Morphine... And... In at the same time. Right. 
drug abuse. Oh, mixing cocaine and morphine. That's what I want. There are many dangers associated with mixing cocaine and morphine. Why am I reading this to you? This is probably a bad idea for my future YouTube career. Career. Oh well. A substance abuse treatment can assist in managing addiction, including medication-assisted treatment. Combining prescription drugs with illegal drugs can cause significant side effects, especially mixing prescription drugs like morphine with cocaine. Speedball is a street name for the combination of stimulant and an opioid. Oh, okay, so there is... Speedballs are typically injected with needles. Ew, I hate needles. It can also be crushed and snorted together. Or the co- Ah, fuck off! The cocaine is sometimes piggybacked or taken immediately after the heroin. And why, do, why do people do this to themselves? Like, these are all scary as hell drugs to me. People who abuse these drugs together sometimes believe that the negative side effects of each drug's may be reduced. I feel like they would be exasperated at it, if anything. However, this is not the case. Mixing cocaine and morphine can actually increase the risk of negative side effects, permanent damage, overdose, and death. Yeah, I would assume so. Uh, biggest risks of... The other is that the body is trying to metabolize multiple at the same time. Let's stop reading this. I'm just not, I'm just gonna stop because I think I've said drugs too many times. This is Disco Elysium though. Anyway. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality, Guillaume Bevy, stands in front of a rundown drug bin. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. I feel like me and him have more history than I think we do. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. Let me do what she I want, lady. She is eared against the customer and immediately corrects course. Yeah. I'm sorry. I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Yep. Leave. I can do what I want, lady. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Ooh. Is that supposed to be kind of this in-universe's version of paranormal? This co this cable sucks. <laughs> uh, Amidst the various right? books, you find one written by someone named... Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. Hmm. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. How does that it work? serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people uh, don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway, <laughs> without even curing your cold or anything. Wow, okay. That's so just blatant misinformation, maybe? Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Does the book, the say book anything features else? chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How Actually. to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And well, okay then. There's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gold bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases pre and post factum apply nothing worth buying 
This yeah. is just mundane garbage. What's even paranatural about this? Door key. Uh, find something truly otherworldly. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Yeah. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. Ooh, what's the, the book pale? contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's the book about? contains descriptions of various pseudoscientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as le territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. What? Even better if you can find someone else, preferably a large man dressed in nothing but a towel, to thrash you while you're spread naked and helpless on a cool slab. <laughs> Sounds invigorating. And good for the circulation too. <laughs> what else? It also recommends <laughs> consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pale. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pale and leave them there for 30 to 60 days, depending on the potency desired. What is pale Among aged other like benefits, do? It is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. How the fuck is that possible? Is it any more improbable than anything else that human beings put their faith in? It's fair enough. What else is in there? <laughs> For general health and well-being, readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pal. Though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins, especially if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. Is it? I don't know. I don't want to be the party pooper, but this pale territory sounds sort of dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't walk in it naked. Anything There's else an I'm entire not? section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. I probably need that. Excuse <laughs> I believe you've been perusing that particular volume long enough. If you'd like to continue reading, I must insist you buy it. All right, well, I'll leave. I think I've looked at every bookshelf there is here. All I'm trying to do is keep the light fixed on her as I walk by. <laughs> I'm assuming that that's just the same. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf, an endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, Second Edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, Ooh. and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wiral, Cavern of Velcrag. Oh, okay. It's like d and essentially. There's a box that says, We're out. Third edition mega setting supplements module. Yep, the side the panel notes. Third, rather, a fantastic adventure RPGs board in game. general. New maps and miniatures. Pathfinder, d and sticker on it whatever displays 25 the game uses. That's right. The original Cyberpunk game was a top-down... was a TTRPG. Sit in the... I want to call it retro futuristic look of the 80s, but I I, think, I don't know if that's technically. The game actually takes place 
in what would technically be, be the retrofuturistic look of the 90s. Hence the look of the cars, the music. And I think that's really about all I can think of that reminds me of the 90s. But eh, whatever. I never grew up in the 90s. That helps. But I did grow up in the 2000s. Digital 90s. Somewhere in there. Nonsense for anemic beano clods. Lock 25 because I don't have 20. We're out of game. All right. I think that that's going to be it. I thought I would end up getting to like the end of the day today. Apparently not. I thought I could come in here and read books. Time would pass quicker and it didn't. So we're just gonna call it there. I know it's been kind of, kind of a shorter stream, especially since I didn't stream yesterday. But oh well. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Oh, that turned it down.